hopefully this time it is actually going to work. What's good? It's your boy Rico. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Duel. And who is hyped and who was almost precise on the prediction? Do you remember a few videos ago, I predicted that the maintenance is going to be on the 14th. Well, we are getting maintenance scheduled for the 13th. I'm so excited. And I saw that there were going to be some changes to some figures that I have not even looked at yet. So what I want to do is I want to do an actual... Uh, reaction to it so we do have the z power update the 7.0 it is coming on the 13th i cannot wait and also listen this is kind of a re-upload i re uploaded a video last night three matches and it caught off during the second one i don't know why it did hopefully this time it fixes but you will be seeing the last deck the best fairy deck in the game yes vixen even better than your deck actually you know what, now that I think about it, your deck does have four fairies, so it is considered a fairy deck, and your deck is kind of annoying. But uh, it is not Vixen's deck, so let's get into the reaction to some... Oh, dude, changes to some figure, so I don't know what we're going to do. All right, let's see. Mega Mewtwo X, okay, change the Psycho Strike to 150. I like it, I like it. Mewtwo Y, 110 to 130. We've buffed Mewtwo the damage side strike, yes, because and it damage needs to be... Yep, that basically... Buffing damage. That's what they need. So Galia going to 140 on the Flare Blitz. I like that. Give a little description. Should we read the description? Let's read it. So Galia has been used in a variety of decks since it appeared in the game. Although its strength lies in traits other than the Flare Blitz attack, which burns the battle opponent. EXO Galio is knocked out. We've made some figures more well-rounded. Okay, I like this. Malamar. Okay. The Psycho Cut to 100. So it'll be hitting for 150, right? Yeah, because it hits for one. Yeah, so 150. Yeah, it does 50 more damage. Okay. I like this. So you see the, the buffing in the psychic figures. Oh, man. I don't even want to come across the DOA. Oh, man. All right. Let's see. Other indirect changes are coming to help increase and increase the effectiveness of massive gnosis oh, by nullifying Tabu Kogo's electric surge induced sleep removal. Really? Really? Not only is rare hypno, which has the that capability being adjusted okay to easier to be easier to use but a new partner for malamar is slated to appear soon is that gonna be the uh the ex um god why can't i think of that dark how are they gonna how are they gonna nerf that on tapu coco though like when tapu coco came out in this game and it was that had that ability of sleep i thought it was just something random but then when i checked it in the real like in the the main series that was part of the ability so how are they gonna nerf that i don't know how i feel about that evolta going to 150 oblivion wing okay uh with its ability that blocks the passage of ghost type pokemon and the current metagame that features many strong ghost type pokemon ex volta is an increasingly important figure it is volta is less effective in the environment in which rayquaza yep rayquaza are dominating yep however we've buffed the base okay what does it buff to 151 i mean when you're running Ray, you're running Altarius, it's still going to be hitting for over 150. So, I don't know. They they mentioned Ray, but then they mentioned that, I mean, Ray still does more damage. M what? Wh what? Mew changed Psychic 50 to Psychic 1. Really? I don't know about that, man. I mean, it makes it good. It can Mew can now indirectly take out Zoro. Uh, well, like when you chain it to 1. So, wow. Mew's a special Pokemon that, to make this... To make its character characteristics stand out, I need to stop reading so fast and talking so fast. Stand out more. We've buffed the damage of its psychic white attack to 100, improving its capacity to counter Pokemon with attacks that do under 100 damage, which have been able to easily defeat. But, but that it's so small. I, I don't, man. I don't know about that. I have no idea about that. Uh, da, da, da. Mew, since they are not subject to the damage nullification, but okay. Cosmo EM. What? Change the effect of Cosmic Power. The Cosmic Power Blue gives Rare Cosmo plus one star to its purple while. Okay. And now we've added an effect to the plus one MP. Really? I wonder if there's like a cap to that. Because like what if you continually hit it? Do you just continually add an MP? There's got to be a cap. Uh, the ability our Cosmo allows it to evolve when it surrounds. Yes. Okay. 
I mean, that's good. Hopefully, it only adds only one MP. Well, hopefully, it, it caps at two MP. I don't want to see this thing moving around three, four, five MP. Probably, I probably to a max of three, I would assume. But hopefully, it's two. Hypno chain psychics, dude. The fact that Hypno is hitting for a hundred damage, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, made it narrow. Changed confusion to side beam, which made it narrow. Oh, so side beam confuses too. I think so. That's good. Made Sleepwalker wider. I can't remember what the Sleepwalker does. I think it makes you... Let's see. Sleepwalker purple attack makes the battle opponent fall asleep and lets you move a sleeping Pokemon to a point within that Pokemon's MP range. Okay. We've buffed Hypno to make it easier to utilize Sleepwalk. Pangoro? There's a fighting, right? We're having a fighting psychic deck? Change Hammer Arm 90 to 120. The Mold Breaker, this is actually going to be good because of the Mold Breaker ability, which nullifies any effects of battle opponents. Ability to increase or decrease damage. Okay, so I like the 120 damage. It's not going to increase or with the Mold Breaker. That's, that's really good. We're buffing the damage of Hammer Arm to help you. Okay, Sharpedo. Oh, Dark. Dark, Dark, Dark. dark. Yeah, Psychic Dark. Sharpedo, Ice Fang, 40 to Ice Fang, 80. Change Noxious Fang, 50 to Noxious Fang, 90. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I don't know if it was ne totally necessary because those attacks are just meant to status condition. But I guess it gives it a little bit more survivability. I don't know. I'm not sure. Sharpedo has an attack that inflicts a special condition. Gotta slow down. On its battle opponent and the Skull Bash attack, which knocks out the battle opponent if it's already affected by a special condition. Both Ice Fang and Noxious Fang inflict a special condition on the battle opponent if Sharpedo knocks itself out. So, losing to the battle opponent is actually a possible tactic with it's not really because if you lose it, then you are KO'd, then they're status, then you're going to have to max revive and attack and hope to get the Skull Bash. I think it's too much. I think it's too much. Trapedo's best going to, uh, uh, with like somebody who can already cause damage or uh, status condition upon attack so like if you pair a sharpedo with like a science toad or a um drag algae that's what i think in my opinion whoa executor I, you, some of you may have seen my executor videos uh I, on halloween so change the barrage 100 and 110 so it will be hitting because of its ability it can be hitting for does it add 50 per execute so for 150 160 if you have three execute figures you may want to try okay as long as in the continue wait wait, wait, wait. You may want to try playing with executor deck as long as there is a continuous supply of execute on the field exec executor on which you have used the odd increase or miracle seed play can consistently what what deal 180 190 damage and just wait until we get the Alolan Executor. Probably not going to have any synergy with Executes, but I don't know. Hmm. I'll have to ponder on this a lot more because right now <laughs> I'm, I'm totally supposed to be at work right now, but I decided to fix my error because I'm sorry. I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I don't know what happened to the video. That This is actually my third time uploading it, so I'm kind of upset. But I'm super excited we do have the information. We are beginning it on the 13th. And I'm surprised we did not see a buff on DOA. Are you, I, I cannot believe that. How do you guys feel about that? No buff on DOA. I thought we were going to get more. No buff on Absol? What? What? Okay. I'm like kind of disappointed about that. I'm really disappointed with the figures that they've changed. I wanted more, 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 more. I'm sorry. I don't want to be negative, but I wanted more. However, it is good that we do have the uh, Z Powered update coming away or coming soon. And they left us with, with this cliffhanger here. Malamar is slated to appear soon as well. Wait, what? It says something to help Malamar. Yeah, mass hypnosis changes. Not only is it hypnosis, uh, but a new partner. Oh, new partner for Malamar. Sorry, okay. And like I said, I'm thinking that's going to be the Dark Rye. Okay, we do have a, a purple booster op to open. Let's just open that, pop that open right now. And then, like I said, I do have two matches to show you guys. And hopefully, it freaking works. So, don't be nothing good. All right, let's jump into those matches right now. All right, I totally forgot to even go over the uh, the fairy deck. Let's just let's just quickly go over it and go over the fairy figures. Fairy figures have when I'm looking for a deck, typing specific, the first thing I'm looking for is a runner. 
fairy deck or fairy mons have a pretty good runner in Tapu Koko. Pretty solid runner. The next thing I'm looking for is like a heavy gold or a heavy purple. They do have a lot of heavy gold or heavy purple. They have the whole Ralts line, which is pretty good. And they also have the Mr. Mime. I haven't tested Mr. Mime, but I would like to test Mr. Mime. Um, heavy gold. They don't really have a heavy gold. They have Tapu Koko, who's an okay gold attacker, but not a great gold attacker. I mean, if you do have the X speed, it makes it somewhat usable. And then a beater. Somebody who can do continuously do consistently, I'm sorry, do high damage, <coughs> which fairy kind of doesn't really have. So what I wanted to do when I created my fairy deck, there was one fairy deck that was floating around that I've seen probably months ago, probably six, five, ten, I don't know, a long, long time ago, and I kept seeing this deck in feature. I didn't know who it was until last night, but we'll get to that match at the very end. So I didn't want to create that deck. I mean, I do have the figures for that deck, but I didn't want to create it. So I wanted to build something around Mimikyu. Like, I went to bed and was like, ah, Double Mimikyu would be good. I think Double Mimikyu would be pretty cool. Um, Marshadow is going to support them very well because of Marshadow's ability. Everything does minus 20 damage to this thing. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to curse figures with the Mimikyu. And I was like, all right, so if we curse figures, we don't have a beater. And we don't have a con um, consistently good gold attacker with fairies. So how are we going to KO Mons? Well, in my head, I was like, yo... Rocky Helmet. Rocky Helmet is so good because of the three figures, the Magikarp, Feebas, and the um, Keldeo. Because Mimikyu has a disguise, I'm like, oh, dude, that's perfect. We can uh, Rocky Helmet. I don't, get, I don't get KO'd because of my disguise, and then they get KO'd, so we can curse them and then KO. I was like, dude, that's a brilliant idea. Well, there was one problem because I tested this, and it didn't work, and here is why. When this Pokemon moves from the bench to the field, attach a disguise marker to this Pokemon. Well, that marker is attached to it. This Pokemon is not knocked out in battle. It's not knocked out in battle. Now let's take a look at the Rocky Helmet. Choose one of your Pokemon on the bench or field. If that Pokemon is knocked out by attack damage for this turn, the battle opponent is also knocked out. So I was rocking double Rocky Helmet, all right? So forgive me for that mistake. This was the first match I actually played. And it took me a few matches to actually realize that that didn't work. I, it happened on a fracture. I Rocky Helmeted. They didn't get KO'd, and I stayed on the board. I lost my disguise. I was like, uh, what just happened there? Why didn't that work? But look at we were playing. We are playing against Khan Can. Um, with a rush deck, so let's see how this match goes. I'm gonna be defensive with the Marshadow because I don't want him rushing with the speed, and then I'm gonna block off this Marshadow. Although I would prefer to block off the um, Gengar, but I see him moving up the Gengar, so we're gonna have the um, the Mimikyu coming over, and I forgot to explain. Uh, double Mimikyu curse banish the Tabufini goalie. Fairy needs a goalie, and I think this is actually a good goalie because people like, are not gonna safely attack into it because of the Pony Wish. I mean, I know we have Z moves. But it's still pretty good, and the purple, it's its a win condition. And then we also have the Morlo, which I also forgot to state, that uh, fairies have some good blue attackers. And the Morlo, the Spore, that is really good. Just in case they want to take the entry points, I can Spore with my Morlo and get things back on the field from the bench. So they're going to advance over the Gengar, and we are going to cover goal. And they are going to DC here and try to get rid of my Marshadow, who, Lance Dodge, thank you, let's go. And then the opponent re-rolls here. I don't know why. Who knows? I think I move up my uh, Mimikyu. Yeah, bring up my Mimikyu next. And then the opponent is going to counter here with the Zoro, I believe. And we're going to stop and talk about this. So what I decided to do here, I was like, all right, I'm just going to attack this. I have pretty good odds at removing this Zoro with the Rocky Helmet. Well, I completely out damage this Zoro, period, because I have the Marshadow on the board, so he's doing negative 20 damage to me. Everything on the wheel loses to my play rough. But what do I do? Not paying attention. Like I said, please forgive me. This is the first time I was running this uh, deck. <laughs> I'm going to Rocky Helmet here. Unaware of what it can do, but we do get we do get the roll. We hit the play rough. I do out damage the night days. That's good, but now I'm dazed. So the opponent's going to come at me with a Lucario. And look how big my miss is. But fortunately for me, I hit the curse on the Metal Claw. And I'm like, let's go. We also brought the uh, Bright Powder, which I did not talk about. Bright Powder, uh, a great plate to go up against figures that have that spin, you know, heavy purple, heavy blue. But since this thing is cursed and I out damage the Lucario as well, we are going to Bright Powder and we're going to try to banish this figure right now. However, we hit the curse. All right, well, that's very unfortunate. So now the opponent has to cover up goal with the Dio Speed. The Dio Speed 
I'm not going to attack just yet. I actually probably should have attacked the Lucario because it hasn't removed the curse, but now it does remove the curse. But I didn't want the Lucario advancing over here, leaving me prone to lose my Curlia or have the Lucario take out the disguise on this Mimic U. So he removes this disguise, so now we have no choice. We're going to attack here, and they're going to pull the switch with the Zoro. Hoping we hit the play rough and we hit the play rough again. Let's go. Both Zoros are gone. When Zoro's gone in a rush deck, you're doing pretty good. But the opponent still has the 4 MP off the bench DOS and has the max revive. So I'm going to have to win multiple rolls in a row just to try and win this game. So we're going to DC here. We don't get the white, but that's why we DC. So we roll again and we get the curse. I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's cursed and it's subject to be banished. But I would have preferred the KO and have them burn the max revive right away. So now what the opponent is going to do, they are going to... What the heck is that? Something just pulled up on my screen. I don't know what it is. Uh, but they're going to DC here. Really good odds at taking out my uh, Mimikyu. Basically every winning roll unless they roll a dodge. But because this thing is uh, cursed, <laughs> I'm probably getting a little defensive here. So the plan here is to try to move up my Feeny uh, to... Z move, but they're gonna pull a nice max revive and a switch, and now they do get rid of the uh, the curse. Opponent here, though, they're going to Mega Gengar. I'm not sure why they're gonna Mega Gengar here, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna try and get rid of my Tapu Fini, probably for the three MP. That's why, but my Tapu Fini comes through and hits the opponent. Which, let's go. We are going to banish this Mega Gengar, and I'm good. Everything that's left on the board, I can out damage with. My Mimikyu, so I'm pretty happy the Mega's gone. So I'm going to max revive my Mimikyu here. I think my opponent definitely should have attacked there to try to get the gold on purple. Um, to remove my Disguise. That way I would have lost my Disguise and then he can X-Speed here and remove my Mimikyu. But they don't do that. And I stopped real quick because I want to talk about this play, which I think was a misplay on my end. We're going to actually go back one turn. So the goal here is to get to this Zoro. I move right here, and I was fearing that the opponent was going to uh, protect the Zoro with their Mars Shadow. What I should have done was I should have moved my Mimikyu right here. This ensures that I'm going to have a surround the following turn, and it's going to force him to move the Lucario here or to attack my Mimikyu, and then I can attack the Zoro. Like, it ensures me to uh, have the attack on the Zoro the following turn. However, my opponent is just going to X speed and move right here instead, and as you guys saw... Uh, lands a dodge, but I think that was a misplay on my opponent, and I think he should have been covering uh, the Zoro on the goal. So we get we got lucky there. Now we're going to attack the Zoro. <laughs> I don't know why Rocky Helmet after I completely out damage it in Rocky Helmet wouldn't have worked anyway if it out damaged me. Uh, but he hits the dodge. The opponent's going to attack again with the Lucario. He has to get rid of this disguise. Hits the Aura Sphere, and that's all my Lucario. So he does get rid of the Disguise. Now all he has to do is win one more roll, but we're going to attack again the Zoro, and we do get the player up on the cross counter. Let's go. All we need to do is to hit our purple here, and that is GG, boys. Unfortunately for the opponent, they're going to hit the dodge. Lucario, why are you trying to dodge a Mimic, you bro? You just dodge the game and let me win. Let's go. All right. That's game number one. Let's go into game number two, where I'm going to be showing you guys, in my opinion, the best fairy deck. All right, like I said, I've seen this deck for a while now. I was never able to show it off, so I'm actually happy I do get to show it off to you guys. And this comes from the one and only D Perino. All right, so let's evaluate their deck real quick. Every figure on this, their deck, benefits from the pre Marina's ability, which. This Pokemon is not affected by a special condition. While this Pokemon is on the field, the effect of round becomes damage is multiplied by the number of your own Pokemon on the field that have round or sing. So let's take a look. Uh, this thing right here is going to be hitting for a whopping 240 damage. This thing uh, does have the evolution into the other uh, Sylveon. If this thing was chained to 10... This thing would be hitting for a whopping 300 damage. And I'm not going to do the math for here. 50. No. No, you can't attack. You can't hit. You don't hit. That doesn't matter. Round, it would be 6 times 27, whatever that is. And you don't have round or So that's, okay, so that's, it's just, okay, I guess it's just these figures. 
One, two, three, four. So it's four of the figures. And they are rocking the four times, or three max revives and the recycle. And this thing, with its ability, whenever this Pokemon moves to the PC, to the bench, it can evolve. So recycles, well, I guess one of them is primarily used for the Eevee. But let's see what I can do with my fairy deck. So I'm going to open up with the Marshall. I go first. We're just going to rush the entry point right away, force them to cover up. Dude, Poplio is so good right now. Um, but I see the uh, Sylveon, so we're going to counter it with the Morlo, just in case it wants to attack me. We want to sleep it, and then we're going to advance up with our uh, Mimikyu. Opponent is going to attack. Perino, don't attack me. No, look at that. Three figures on. It does 140 damage, or 120 damage. Ugh. All right, so here's my plan, guys. Here's my plan. We need to eliminate some of these figures. We need to eliminate 40 damage from their total damage. So here's here was my plan. This is my d a Mimikyu who has level 10 into the curse. What I wanted to do was I wanted to DC curse this figure, and then we are going to attack it, get rid of the disguise, and then uh, Rocky Helmet is. We're, we need to curse this. We need to get banish it. We need to get it off of the board. So I'm going to DC here. We're going to go for the curse. However, we just get the outright KO. And I was like, mm. okay. I probably should have re-rolled there, actually. I definitely should have re-rolled because, I mean, I would have only lost if I would have hit a miss. but And then I would have, what, lost my disguise? If I re-rolled and I, I only hit my uh, Shadow Claw, it would be neutral damage because, oh, no, it wouldn't be neutral damage because my Marsh Shadow's gone. So, actually, I shouldn't have re-rolled. That was actually a good play. But since the Poppyo is right here, it allows me to freely bring on my Curlier on this side because Curlier is fine against these figures. I see Perino is going to max revive here, so he's going to rush my left side, so I'm going to max revive my Marshadow. Put him right here just in case Perino wants to move here. I don't think he's going to. He's a pretty good player. He's actually... Perino, don't let his uh, rating fool. He's a 3K player. He usually likes to tank towards the end. Attacking with the uh, Eevee. And we do get the KO, I mean, but he does still, he has the other Max Revive, and he's going to get the uh, other Sylveon. But I'm going to protect my uh, Gardevoir with my Mimikyu, because I don't want this thing coming over. Um, and what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and the same thing. We're going to try to curse this figure, and then we're going to try to banish this figure. Has a large thing. I have, I, have a, I have a plan up my sleeve. I am rocking the X Speed. So, I'm going to wake up my Mimikyu, and I'm going to attack again. Can we please get the curse? And we do. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got the curse. This thing is gone. This thing is going to get banished. So, they're going to Hydro Vortex. They're going to come straight after my Mimikyu. I don't know why. Probably just to get rid of the disguise right now. So, that's exactly... Oh, probably to confuse. That's that's what it was. To confuse my, uh, my uh, Gardevoir. So now, since he did that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to X speed here. This thing does have a large purple. I'm like, let's go. We have large gold. They have large purple. It is time to get you off of the board. <sighs> come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. I'm like, <sighs> I need a win here. Uh, but Burrito is going to actually attack into my Tapu Fini, which I don't agree with because if you talk it, attack into my Tapu Fini, which he does twice, Look at that, 240 damage. Okay, first we're going to explain, why are you ta attacking into my Tapu Fini? If you did, and I hit the Pony Wish, we're definitely getting rid of you. And then we're definitely going to bring our Mars Shadow up. You don't have a Z move. I hit the dodge? That's GG, boys. He attacked in there twice. I think that's two misplays. Uh, but I'm glad he did attack into me, and I'm glad I kind of did get the, uh, the Muddy Water. Because in my head, I was like, I don't know the math. I, I don't know what this thing is hitting for. I thought about Z moving it because I hit for, what, 158? Wait, yeah, 150. No, yeah, 158, I think. But I was like, is that enough to KO? I, I really don't know. And then when it did 240, I was like, okay, that's okay. I, uh, that makes sense. But risky, ris risky Perino, I, that could have been bad for you. Um, and you're not rocking the gold block. So I'm going to bright powder here. I'm like, all right, we're still going to get rid of this. Let's go. Round. I'm like, all right, look how big that thing is. We can get rid of you. Please, let's go. We can threaten game after this. All right, okay. And, uh, yeah, now we're now we're doing bad. So now I'm just going to move up my figures because I'm just kind of hoping that he's going to continually attack into my Tapu Fini. But I think Perino understands the mistake that he was making. He's like, I probably should not be talking or attacking into that Tapu Fini. Otherwise, Rico would be in a position to win because I would get rid of that 
And now everything is just everything's going bad. He realized his mistake, and now <laughs> there, I, there's nothing I can do against this 240 damage. So I'm just going to advance up with the Morlo. There's nothing I can do here. The reason why I did that because I want to bring on my uh, Mimic you here. Or not my Mimic you, my, uh, my, my Marshadow. And then Marshadow does not hit the dodge from here right there. Now he's going to Z move, and he's just slowly killing me, getting rid of my Morlo. And I only have one shot to even, look how big that miss is. I only have one shot to like get my figure on the board, and that is to banish one of their one of his Sylveons right now. So we're gonna attack with the uh, Tapu Fini. <laughs> we just get damaged, and I'm like, oh damn! All right, that is GG, boys. There's nothing I can do. I mean, we had opportunities to win here. Uh, but sometimes the dice doesn't roll your way, so I give him the win. So, GG boys to D Perino. You guys, this is the third time uploading. Hopefully this is the last time I have to upload this video. The Z Powered update is coming out. I cannot wait. We have a week left. Let's go. Peace.